This is the Power Break Podcast number 230, titled, Help for the Weary. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker. We're doing a solo cast again today without my co-host, JT, who is off to attending to things with his aunt. Well, we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. As JT usually reminds us, this is the Power Break Podcast with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to bobbrewbaker.com. Follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. Well, we welcome you to the Power Break Podcast today. We thank you for joining us. As I mentioned last time that JT was off tending to things with his aunt who had been in the hospital and playing the role of a good nephew. And please pray for JT and his aunt. That would be a great thing to do. As mentioned on the last podcast, that you'd be an intercessor on his and her behalf. We appreciate it very much. We also appreciate you telling others about the Power Break podcast, uh, also leaving us a rating and or a review whenever you download the podcast and helping us to spread that word through social media, word of mouth. However you do it, we give you thanks for listening and for telling others, and getting the word out about the Power Break podcast. Today we're talking about help for the weary. Boy, we need that right now, don't we? Many people are express weariness. They're tired. Um, they're just tired with what's going on in life, probably because we try to pack too much in, in on life, and so we're burning the candle at both ends, and we wonder why we're not as bright as we should be. <laughs> well, we all get weary in life, and we need some help, and thankfully God addresses the situation. Isn't this a comforting verse? Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That, of course, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, and it is true help for the weary. And that's what we're talking about today as I take a look at my blog that I, you can find at bobrebaker.com. By the way, as JT usually mentions, that we that, uh, encourage you to check out the, the, blog, the blog and other things at bobrebaker.com. Uh, of course, you can sign up for the weekly subscription to the blog. That means it'll get to your email box every um, Monday morning. Uh, there's the thing called the MailChimp that gets that out uh, miraculously every morning. Uh, every Monday morning, and so it gets out, and you can check out the the, lo- the latest podcast. And of course, uh, it seems like we we've um, come across this this the system where we talk about it uh, the next day uh, from on the podcast. So that's what we're talking about today. Help for the weary. Check it out uh, the podcast and the blog at bobrebaker dot com. But let's talk about that blog. Help for the weary. As I as I wrote about in that blog that uh, weariness is just seems to be part of the season here at the Advent season, the Christmas season, or the time of the Incarnation, if you please. And it's, not, it's just not f- fascinating how people for a long time, uh, about long for this time of the year, throughout, and throughout the year, really, uh, they become weary and long for it to be over. Even though they've been waiting for this time of the year, they talk about it, and then when they're in the midst of it, <laughs> I can't wait till it's over. Seems like that's how life goes. We wait for something, and then we're in it, and we just like to be over. Is there help for the weary? Well, on, in the blog, I quoted from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30 here. And I'll quote it again, but just let me just say, it sounds like such a simple solution to focus on being yoked with the Lord Jesus Christ through life, and all it brings, and that's the only way to survive. By the way, he says he provides rest for the weary, as his yoke is easy and his burden is light, mainly because he carries the brunt of things. What happens when we lose sight of that? Well, we become weary because we try to do things on our own. Here's an example from the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah the prophet himself. He got weary and expressed it to God, and God said, If you have raced with men on foot and they have wearied you, how will you compete with horses? That's a good test for us. If we get weary right now, what happens when greater challenges come? We're going to get really tired very quickly. At one time, Jeremiah just decided, all right, I quit. I'm not doing this anymore. 
I'm not going to speak of the Lord anymore. He was being criticized for speaking for the name of the Lord. He was being criticized for bringing up the prophecies that God was giving to him. And so he says, I'll not mention him anymore. I'll not speak anymore in his name. And he said, then all of a sudden, he said, there seems to be in my heart, as it were, a burning fire that shut up in my bones. And he says, I became weary with holding it in, so I cannot go on like that. (laughs) See what God was doing? Trying to hold back, and you get really weary. That's a good lesson for us. We get weary when we try not to do the will of God. (laughs) It's not worth it. Maybe our weariness stems from that. Well, Jeremiah complained about his situation in life. God responded with an analogy of his being weary with a smaller task at hand and simply indicated that he was not ready for more. Later, when Jeremiah became very discouraged by the rejection of the word by the people, uh, he just tried to quit. The problem was that he just can't simply quit God's call on your life. It's not a mere of a career choice. It's a burning fire within And the more Jeremiah tried to deny that fire within and pretend it wasn't there, the more weary he became and finally admitted that the truth he returned to his call as a prophet. Once again, the key to avoiding weariness of life, even in the place where God has called us, is to go back to the basics for the weariness of life. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are laboring and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's another, uh, quote unquote, weariness principle in the Bible where God expresses weariness with those who pretend repentance that's not true and expressions of weariness of those who pretend to worship him with a whole heart, but they don't. So he says, have you rejected me, declares the Lord? Have you kept going backwards, so I have stretched out my hand against you and destroyed you. I'm weary with your relenting, your repenting. So when we talk about what's going on with with this, he says in Malachi, God speaks about the same principle when he says, but unto you I say, what weariness this is. And you snort at it, says the Lord of hosts. You bring what has been taken by violence or is lame or sick, This you bring as an offering. Shall I accept that from your hand, says the Lord? The point must be understood. When we give God anything less than he deserves in wholehearted repentance and service, then our quote-unquote fake service becomes a weariness to him. Where do you go when, when we become weary in being sincere and our repentance is less than wholehearted in our service? Come to me, Jesus says, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. There's an Old Testament expression of that same principle that's found in the very famous passage in Isaiah 40, 30, and 31. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, young men shall fall exhausted, but they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint." So, you may be struggling with weariness of life and challenges that are coming your way at this time. Keep in mind the help that God has for you in the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not meant to carry on through the weariness of life by yourself. Admitting you need His help is the first step to being yoked up. Staying close to Him through the struggles of life continues that yoking experience. And your added confidence is knowing that He's carrying the load, not you. And that's the help that you need. It's a designated way to help the weary. Check it out. It's called, the article is called, Help for the Weary. Check it out at bobbrubaker.com. As JT normally says at this point on the podcast, Bob, what else is happening? What would you like the listeners to know about this week? And I wanted to turn to the little book that I wrote called Running to Win. And of course, running to win means that you are committed to running that race with the Lord Jesus Christ, not trying to do it on your own. Running to win is a principle that I learned, and well, we're all learning to do it even more and more. It's a good principle from the Bible, and you'll find the book at bobbrewbaker.com. Check out the sermon links to the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church in Clearwater, Florida there. 
at uh, the link there at bobberbaker.com. It's all the links uh, to the sermons and the books. You'll all find it at bobberbaker.com. As JT usually mentions at this point in the podcast, that this is the Power Break podcast. And of course, it's JT along with Bob Brubaker, and, and it's time for questions and answers. That feel free to submit your questions by email to JT. Here's the address, jt at bobbrubaker.com. And as he always mentions, we'll get to answering that on an upcoming Power Break podcast. Come on, send your questions this way. We'd love to answer them. Well, question number one from the spiritual side of life, is it sinful then to get weary in well-doing? Good question, JT. Good question. Here we go. First of all, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 says, Let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Okay, that's the promise that God gives to us. The point is, all of us grow weary even in doing good from time to time. Maybe we need to be reminded, like Jeremiah, that if we haven't run uh, very well with men on foot, how are we going to face the time when we compete with horses? In other words, how are we going to, if we, if we can't make it through the challenges, these challenges, how will we do when we get greater challenges in life? Well, as Jeremiah said, he wasn't going to mention that anymore, but it was like fire within his bones shut up that he had to speak in the name of the Lord. In other words, we go back to understanding that it is God who has called us and it is God who will sustain us. And therefore, we come back to him as Jesus says, come on, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me, Jesus says. So it really is not a sin to get weary, but when you fail to turn to him, you're telling him, I can make it on my own. That would be sin, because that is pride in action. We desperately need him. We desperately need his help. And the way we get that help, as he says in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, is to be yoked up with him. We can't be going the opposite way. We have to go the way that he's going. We need his help. We need his encouragement. And and we need to stay close to him because his burden is light. His yoke is easy. And he will see us through. So, Getting close to Him and learning from Him and learning about Him because the Lord Jesus Christ is that gentle shepherd that will see us through. It's not wrong to get weary, but it is to stay that way, refusing the help of the Lord Jesus Christ, our wonderful, gentle shepherd. Question number two is from the mental aspect. What do we do to keep mentally alert and avoid becoming weary? Well, again, going back to that promise that he will, he says, come to me, all you who are laboring or heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest for your souls, and my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Mentally, we need to grasp that, don't we? Not just look at it as words to read and maybe some comfort that we find in those words, but those words are important to us. And so when he says, come to me, we think about, why should I sit here and try to do things on my own when I can come to him and find rest for my soul? We need to turn to him. Come to me, Jesus says. You're laboring, you're weary and doing well. Come to me, you're heavy laden. He says, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Yoke up with me. I'm the one that's in control. (laughs) I'm the one that can carry the heavy burden. You're not designed to do that. What you're designed to do is come to him and seek his comfort, help, and encouragement. Also from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 30 and 31, reminding us that even youths, in other words, those who are strong in the body normally and strong in the mind, well, they'll become faint and weary. And the young men shall fall exhausted. But he says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Waiting on the Lord. Staying close to the Lord. Not moving until you sense, he says, move. He says, they'll renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. 
Mentally, then, we get a handle on what God says in his word, and mentally we say, well, that's what he says, and I believe it. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, he that... Uh, by, uh, he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him, seeking him, staying close to him, relying upon him, waiting on the Lord. It's a way to renew your strength, to mount up, as it says, like wings like eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint. Our third question is from the physical side of life, and uh, the question came to us and said, I'm doing aerobic exercises five days a week, but I'm not seeing the weight loss that I was led to believe would happen. Should I continue to go on to to something else or continue what I'm doing? Good question. Aerobic exercise, let's remind us, has the following benefits. It improves muscle strength in, in the lungs, heart, and really the entire body. Uh, aerobic exercise l- lowers your blood pressure, improves circulation and blood flow in the muscles. It increases red blood cell count to enhance oxygen transportation, reduces the risk of diabetes, stroke, and cardiovascular disease, improves life's expectancy and symptoms for people with coronary ar- artery diseases. It stimulates bone growth and reduces the risk of osteoporosis. Uh, improves sleep hygiene, enhances stamina by increasing the body's ability to store energy molecules such as fats and carbohydrates within muscle. So, wow. Just review the benefits. If you're doing aerobic exercise, there's a reason to keep doing it. But on the other hand, there may be some benefits to adding some resistance exercise such as weights or bands in two of the five slots that you're working out. It just makes sense that adding a load can help um, change the structure of things. And also, it it actually gives you more power and builds up muscle a little bit more. And so that when you are doing aerobic exercises, you're actually burning more calories uh, as you're exercising. Something to check out. It's good to exercise five days a week. Don't get me wrong. And it's good to do aerobic exercise. But maybe if you're really focused on losing weight, that you add some resistance training in there as well. Well, changing your routine around does take discipline. But as we say each week, that discipline does make the difference in all aspects of life. Check out today's show notes at bobbrewbaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 230. And as JT usually reminds us, submit your questions by email to jt at bobbrewbaker.com. Listen for our answers on the upcoming Power Break podcast. Quick word for the book, Running to Win, a book that I wrote uh, from my experiences in doing Ironman triathlons, but really some good principles from Word of God to rely upon God in everything we do. And that's how you run to win in the race of life. Check out the show notes, or excuse me, check out the book at bobbrewbaker.com. Click on the resources, scroll through the resources to the books, and through the books you'll find it, Running to Win. Check it out at bobbrewbaker.com. Well, I thank you for listening today. JT is off, as I mentioned, uh, again this week as he cares for his aunt. We pray that God would help sustain JT in his work as a good nephew and also that his aunt would have a good and safe and speedy recovery. But we thank you for listening to the Power Break podcast. Please subscribe and leave a review wherever you have downloaded the podcast. Click, uh, click uh, Check out the show notes, news, uh, my weekly blog, and other cool things at bobbrewbaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break podcast.